Let's um, discuss an even more um, challenging question of, okay, so you have shown me uh, the, 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 the benefit of using a prior, okay? So the, uh, so the benefit of using a prior is that when I do not have enough training samples, then the prior is going to help me find a better estimate using my prior knowledge. But how do I choose a prior? Uh, can, you, can you give me some examples of choosing a, a useful prior? Now, this is a very deep question, and that again has to go with your specific problem if you want the best answer. Uh, computationally, there are some, uh, some rules of thumbs that you may want to consider. And the, the rules of com, uh, the, the thumbs really, is really uh, based on the computational convenience. Okay. It, it may not be based on any, any physical interpretation of your specific problem. It's just based on the computational convenience. Let me explain what I mean by computational uh, convenience. So uh, there are multiple um, parameters in a Gaussian setting. There is a mean, there's a variance, so you can put the prior for the mean, you can put the prior for the variance, right? So let's look at the mean case first. Uh, so if you have a mean, you want to put a prior of the mean, what we have just shown before, okay, so the, so the two pages before, is that suppose this is your likelihood is a Gaussian by your problem definition. If you choose the prior to be also a Gaussian, then you can show that the posterior distribution is also a Gaussian. Now, you may think that this is, this is, a, this is so nonsense, okay? A Gaussian times a Gaussian becomes a Gaussian. It, yes, this is very important, okay? Why are you choosing the prior of the mean to be Gaussian? It's literally because that you want the likelihood multiplied with a prior will remain the same distribution. Why? You want convenience. You don't, okay, if you, ch if you change this to a, some complicated distribution, standard chain distribution, you multiply that, and then you want to calculate the mean, it's just extremely tedious, right? Now, if it is, if it is a Gaussian, you multiply two Gaussian, it's still a Gaussian, it's just a little bit work, and then you can still find out the mean. You can still find out the variance in the exact same form, right? So that will motivate the use of a prior distribution that takes the same form as the likelihood. Now, that's not always the case. I'm going to show you something else, okay? What you really, really want is that you want the likelihood to take certain form. You want the posterior to also take a similar form so that you can obtain the mean and the variance easily. Now, is this choice good? Not necessarily. It really depends on your problem. Okay, if you have a much better sense of your problem, you have physics behind. Physics is always, always use, more useful than all these machine learnings. Okay, so you want to trust your physics. Uh, but if the absence of all, any other expert knowledge, then you may want to consider these computational approaches. Okay, so now uh, let's consider another, a little bit more complicated case. Uh, when your prior is uh, for the sigma squared, no longer the mean, okay? So suppose that the mean is already known. You, we ask, uh, what would be the reasonable prior for the sigma squared? So the mean is fixed, the variance is now changing. So there's a prior for the mean, uh, for, for, for the variance. Uh, so in this case, you can write down the likelihood with respect to your, your variance. So I change, uh, I don't want to call it sigma square, I just call it one over sigma square as lambda. So now you have the lambda here, you have lambda there. Then you can write this equation into this form. Okay? It's just exactly the same as before, but I just uh, we replace your sigma, one over sigma square by lambda. Okay? So I want to find the likelihood in terms of the lambda. It's in this format. All right. So what kind of um, prior that I should choose so that when I multiply my prior p lambda with this likelihood d given lambda, it will stay in the exact same form, not necessarily the same number, but same form. You recognize this, this is what? This is some constant, I call it a, okay, some constant a times lambda to the power something, lambda to the power something, exponential, exponential, minus lambda minus lambda times some constant times some constant, right? So, so now you may say, how can this ever be a useful prior? Yes, I'm saying that this is computationally very efficient. I'm not saying that it, 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 it is it's justified by physics, okay? It's computationally ex extremely efficient because if your prior p lambda takes this form, 
you multiply that with your likelihood, you will obtain the same four. Don't believe me? Okay, plug this in, you just have n divided by 2 plus b, and then you have this constant plus c. That, that's all you have, okay, in, in, in your posterior. It's just very easy. If you have a way to estimate the mean for this guy, you will have a way to estimate the mean for the posterior. It's just very convenient. Okay. So, what is the prior for this distribution? Well, the candidate is, ha, huh, this one. What is it? I don't know, so I go to Wikipedia, I find it out, and the Wikipedia says it's called the gamma distribution. Alright, so, so, so this is how, how engineering students work on problems, right? You, you go to your favorite website called Wikipedia and find out the distribution. Alright, so this is the distribution. This is, this is called a gamma distribution. Now, now what does it mean? It means that if you have a likelihood, okay, and then you know the mean, you, 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 you want to find a prior for your variance. You ask what is the best prior for the variance according to this rule of thumb, you're going to use the gamma distribution. Okay, so uh, what are the meaning of the gamma distributions? I'm not going to go into detail uh, because Wikipedia will teach you everything you need. Okay, so, so there are just different parameters, uh, A and B uh, uh, here, and then you can show that the mean of uh, lambda is given by A divided by B, a variance of lambda is A divided by B squared. Something that I'm not able to prove by myself, but someone has proved, proved that. Yes, question. Uh, the, does the data has to be gamma distributed? No, okay. The data that you're looking at is still Gaussian distributed. However, the prior that you're using, you, 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 are, you are asking what is the prior for my variance? And then this, this very interesting game says that the prior for the variance is better to be a gamma distribution. It doesn't say that your, your data has to come from gamma distribution. The data is still a likelihood of the Gaussian, but then by using a gamma gamma prior for your variance, you're going to show that the posterior distribution will remain the same as your likelihood, so that you can obtain the mean and variance easily for that distribution. All right, so now you, you may say that, oh, this is, this is a little bit mysterious, uh, then I'm gonna show you something even more mysterious now. Okay, so suppose, uh, okay, so this is just a, another slide summarizing uh, uh, if we consider this pair of likelihood and the prior, then you will show that uh, uh, it will take this form and then a little bit more calculation that uh, is just another gamma distribution. Okay, so that shows you that the, the, the posterior distribution is a gamma distribution, so finding out the mean and the variance of the gamma distribution, there are some known techniques to do so. Okay, so the more mysterious thing is this. Suppose you want to put a prior on both uh, mu and sigma square. Okay, so you want to put a prior on both the mean and also the variance. Then you ask what is the, the good prior. Okay, by good I still mean the computationally efficient prior. Then you write down the likelihood function, and then you put the lambda, because I'm assuming that lambda equals to one over sigma square. And then you also have the mu sitting somewhere here and there. Then you write down this expression. With a lot of magic, you can show that it can be written as a product of a Gaussian times a gamma. Now, I'm not doing any dirty thing over here. It's still a Gaussian distribution for the data. However, by recognizing this form, I would suggest, why don't we choose a prior of this form? Why? Well, because this form has the exact same form as my likelihood. Okay, and what is this? And of course, uh, lots of genius people in the past, they have worked this out, and if you show that it is a Gaussian times a gamma. Okay, and so this Gaussian times a gamma is a very good prior when you want to put a prior for mu and sigma square. Okay, now, it, what is it called? What, how does this distribution call? It's called the normal gamma distribution. Again, something you can find it out on the Wikipedia. All right, so, uh, what is the bottom line message? Well, the bottom line message is that uh, you give me the likelihood function and I recognize the form and then I can always find something that can match with your likelihood. Okay, That idea can also generalize to high dimensional Gaussians. Right? So the ones that I'm showing you are this 1D Gaussians. For high dimensional Gaussians, uh, what are the prior of prior for the mu uh, is a Gaussian. The prior for the covariance matrix is called the Wishart 
uh, distribution, something that, again, I don't remember the formula. Uh, uh, prior for both mu and sigma, it's called the normal wish hard distribution. All right. If you're interested in, you can, you can take up the, 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 the internet and then you can find a lot of information about these distributions. Okay. The, the, the message I want to, sh to tell you is not to ask you to derive these. Okay. It's to, 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 to tell you that when you try to solve a problem, there, there is a rule of thumb, which is to find a distribution that, a prior distribution that matches with your likelihood. That's the, that's the message that I want to tell you. All right. Now, uh, this concept belongs to a very, very big family of uh, ideas in the statistics called the conjugate prior. This idea of conjugate prior is, uh, it says that if you give me this likelihood, my prior has to take the same form as your likelihood. Okay? Any prior that has this uh, property is called a conjugate prior. And then a very important uh, thing is that uh, this conjugate prior can you, you okay? You may think that the confining conjugate prior is very extremely complicated because because I show you the likelihood function and then I work out all these magics and then I show you boom this is the equation right and and, and now the good news is that uh, for a lot of distributions uh, that belongs to this family of distributions called the exponential family that includes a lot of your favorite distributions, including Gaussian, Laplace, whatever, whatever, okay? They are all exponential family distributions. Then for all these exponential family distributions, they will have a conjugate prior, okay? So the conjugate prior is guaranteed to exist if you are working on exponential uh, family distribution, okay? That, that includes Gaussian, exponential, Poisson, a, a bunch of those, okay? Uh, now, if we're working on something that's outside the set, uh, then it's a question mark whether you can find it or not. But if you're inside, then you're guaranteed to find. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, and so, uh, when you now you can go out and then try to solve some problems by yourself. Okay. Uh, here's my data set. And then I am putting some, um, uh, um, prior knowledge. The reason I'm putting prior knowledge is because I don't have enough data points. If you have enough data points, there's really no need to put a prior. Okay. Uh, so the prior I'm going to assume is that some mean, some variance depend on my prior knowledge. And then I'm going to define using these, uh, conjugate prior concept. And by using this, I can guarantee that I can have a cheap inference step, meaning that my computation will be easy. Okay. Uh, again, I want to emphasize, um, the last time that if you have a domain knowledge, use your domain knowledge. Okay. Even if it is harder to employ, uh, domain knowledge is always more useful than all these computational tricks. Okay? There's always a trade-off between your domain knowledge and also the, uh, the, the computational tricks. And you may want to find the closest approximation to your, to your domain knowledge so that you, so that you can get a benefit from the both. Okay. So there are a lot of readings, um, for today. Uh, so you, I encourage you to read, uh, in this section, 3.3 to 3.5. Uh, if you read uh, Chris Bishop's um, Pattern Recognition Machine Learning Textbook, that's section 2.4, that's actually a pretty long section, okay? Take a look, they have a lot of diagrams, very illustrative diagrams to explain this concept of conjugate prior. Uh, if you want to have a little bit more uh, an, uh, uh, understanding of this conjugate prior, these two are the external references. Um, here is a uh, very beautiful note um, written by Professor Avi Kai Purdue, uh, ECE. So he has a, a very clear diagram illustrating the connections between likelihood, uh, prior, and also posterior, how these three things uh, work together. Okay. Uh, if you want more derivations, there are equations in the um, appendix, which you can take a look. Okay. So I'll see you uh, next time.